So this is a super ultra wide monitor. We tested out this monitor last year with the PS4, but things didn't go too well. However, this time around, we have the new and improved PS5. So we want to see if we can get that super wide field of view or if it's going to be a bust. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Typically, I use this monitor for office use, which is great for having multiple spreadsheets open or general multitasking, but you guys don't care about that. So how would this fare with a PS5? Well, let's take a look and hook everything up. So now that we have the PS5 hooked up and the monitor hooked up, now it's time to see how the PS5 is initially going to look on this display. Uh oh, things looking a little stretched. Damn, Fat Princess looking extra fat. Well yeah, as expected, as you could possibly see right now, this screen is very stretched out. This exact same thing that happened on the PS4 when I tried using this exact monitor on it, it was just too stretched out. And going from 16 by nine to 32 by nine ends up with a super stretched screen. But before I give up, let me see if there's any settings on the PS5 or on this monitor that might be able to even out the playing fields and hopefully make this display a little bit better. everything in order to try making this PS5 display a little bit better on this monitor. But unfortunately, everything just ended up being stretched. I went into the PS5 settings and in the display options, I tried finding something that allowed me to adjust the aspect ratio to match this monitor. Unfortunately, there is no settings for that because the PS5 mini just doesn't support ultra wide monitors just like this. Also, I tried the Call of Duty settings. I adjusted the field of view um, try increasing it, but all it did was just a bigger, much more stretched out field of view. I even lowered that all the way down to 60 and uh, yeah, you're like super zoomed in. So that didn't work either. And I checked other options in the Call of Duty settings, but no luck there. And then lastly, I checked all the settings on this Samsung monitor. And once again, no luck there. There is nothing there that allows you to adjust the aspect ratio. The only thing that it allows you to do is to override the aspect ratio of the monitor itself and use the source aspect ratio, which in this case was a PS5. So what it did was that it was able to shrink it back to normal view, but you ended up with black bars on both sides. Fortunately, however, you can have two different sources plugged into this monitor so you can have your laptop or computer plugged into this monitor as well as let's say your PS5 and you could have both of them showing at the same time on this specific display. As you can see here, I have the Call of Duty on one side and a, uh, well right now a black rectangle but typically if I had my computer plugged into this monitor then here would be my desktop screen on this side and my Call of Duty on this side. I don't have it plugged in right now because for whatever reason, when they made this monitor, they decided, hey, we're only gonna put one HDMI port on there and one display port on there. So because my laptop doesn't support display port, I can't use that, that port. So right now I only have the PS5 plugged in and if I really wanted to, I could route a cable all the way to my computer. Well, that's just too much work. So I'm just gonna show you how it looked on the PS4 when I did the same process one year ago. So should you get a super ultra wide monitor? Well, to be honest with you, don't. Seriously, do not buy a super ultra wide monitor. It's more gimmick than actual function. In my opinion, just get two 
separate displays instead of this big old display because one, you're gonna save a lot of money because this is uh, this is not a cheap monitor to say the least. You can get two high-end monitors like I have currently on my setup for far cheaper. Not only that, but the input lag on these monitors is quite high. I think this one is hovering around the 30 to 40 millisecond range, which is pretty high, especially on a monitor. Furthermore, this monitor here is 60 FPS. Um, it's kind of below in today's standards. I think there are gaming monitors that are kind of higher than this, but um, this monitor here, it's more for office use and um, it's just not targeted for gamers. That is why this monitor also uses a VA panel instead of a TN or an IPS. So VA panels are really good for contrast, they're really good for brightness, but for gaming, it's not really the best. VA panels are mostly used on like TVs, so to see it on a monitor is not something that I would highly recommend or like I would personally use myself. I always prefer using IPS. I think that's the way to go when it comes to a monitor. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, let me know what you guys think and if you guys even considered buying a super ultra wide monitor. Make sure if you have a PS5, do not buy it. It makes absolutely no sense to do so. I have another monitor that I highly recommend for the PS5 and I even made a whole video on why it's so good. So if you guys haven't checked that one out already, head on over. I'm going to leave the link for it in uh, the top, top left over, or top right right over here. So yeah, go check that one out. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys want, follow me on Twitch. I stream every single Wednesday. So if you have any questions that you want me to deep dive into, or if you just want to hang out with me, head over to my Twitch and you can have a lot of fun. If you want to check out this monitor or any other monitors that I've talked about before in my videos, check the description down below and you're going to find all the links for all the equipment that I use. And of course, it also supports the channel. But anyways, guys, my name is Matthew. Thank you so much for watching. But as always, peace out.